Zechariah was a prophet in the time of the first exile after Jerusalem was destroyed by the Babylonians. And he gave a prophecy and he said, This is what Hashem says. Old men and old women shall again dwell in the streets of Yerushalayim. And each man with his staff in his hand for old age. And then he says, And the streets of the city shall be full of boys and girls playing in its courtyards. And so it happened. That after the Babylonian exile, the Jews came back and rebuilt Jerusalem and old men and old women sat in the streets and children played. And it happened again. 56 years ago. And now if we go to Yerushalayim, if we go to the old city, we see old people sitting on the benches watching the world go by. And we see children playing. And we see this prophecy fulfilled. And it's no coincidence that the words of this verse are inscribed on the stones of one of the courtyards in the old city where children play. But it's tempting to ask is that it? Is this redemption? That people sit in the streets and children play? After all the miracles, and in 1967 there were miracles, as we've heard, the country was facing destruction. Fearing the worst, they dug 100,000 graves. And yet in six days, the world was transformed and Jerusalem was reclaimed. For all these miracles and for all this praying and for all this yearning and waiting, is that it? To sit and play? And part of the answer is, yes it is. Because the Zionist dream was always that Jews would do ordinary things like they've been unable to do for 2,000 years. Jewish life scattered across the world was in many times triumphant and wonderful, but at many other times it was very, very difficult. And people didn't have the chance to sit on the streets or play. Because they were completely moved on to another place, and then to another place. And we didn't have the chance to live as ordinary people. And the Zionist dream was that we could do that. And that's what we see fulfilled. But at the same time, that was only part of the dream. For most of the Zionist world, and certainly for those who call themselves religious Zionists, it wasn't just to be ordinary. It was to be extraordinary. Because Jewish life functions best in the Jewish homeland. And that's why the prophecy begins by saying it will happen again in Yerushalayim, in Jerusalem. It's not enough for Jews to live ordinary lives in peace and tranquility somewhere in the world, worthy though that is. But when we come to Jerusalem, where Jewish life is always enhanced and adorned, in Jerusalem where anyone spending a few hours there can feel the difference, especially on those precious moments on Friday afternoon as the sun sets, there's an aura, there's a feeling that this city is preparing for Shabbat in a way that no other city does. And so the true Zionist dream, the fulfillment of our yearning, was to be ordinary in an extraordinary way. And that's what that prophecy says, and that's what we celebrate this week. That thankfully, after 2,000 years, the Jewish people have returned home to Jerusalem. And yes, old people can sit by the street, and children, including some of my own grandchildren, can play in its courtyard. But there is one more element to this prophecy which is equally important. The children are playing. They're not rushing off to the army to train for war. And the old people girl are sitting, relaxed, not listening out for sirens, not having to know that they're within 90 seconds of a shelter should the rockets be coming. This is a prayer and a prophecy for peace. And that is what we still continue to yearn for. 
for the Jews of Israel, for the Arabs of Israel, for all people who share that land. And we are not there yet. So this Friday, let us celebrate and let us give thanks. And yet let's also pray for the peace of Jerusalem, for the peace of Israel, for the ultimate redemption, when this prophecy will be fully fulfilled. Thanks for that.